Hey guys, it's Alexandra. Today we're going to be talking to Sherelle and Adam, who are a couple that are breaking Mormonism. Um, they're separating from beliefs that they were raised in and uh, rediscovering themselves, um, learning things they didn't know about uh, how to dress, uh, where to go, um, how to, you know, act in a relationship sexually and with communication. Um, basically just taking everything they thought was true and setting it aside and learning um, how to live for themselves. So I think it's a really interesting journey to follow. I hope that you will stay tuned to check out their story and subscribe for more videos. All right, thank you. We were raised as Orthodox Mormons, married in 1921 as virgins. We knew little to nothing about doing it. The only thing that we were taught was don't do it before marriage. I was given two other gems of advice. Never say no to your husband, and only slutty and worldly women actually like it. When I was a Mormon, I had special underwear that covered my shoulders, came down to my knees, and covered my bust. Honestly, I could probably do a whole series on racist shit that Mormon prophets have said. I have lots of different examples of the church coercing and manipulating people, um, but let's take the endowment session. When you go to the endowment session, you have absolutely no idea what's going to happen beforehand. They make you agree to everything before they tell you what it is. You have no idea the covenants that you're going to make before you go there. And it's usually right before you get married or right before you go on a mission, so it's not like you're going to back out. If you were going to sign a legal document that was like covenanting with God and has to do with your whole salvation, wouldn't you want to know beforehand what you're agreeing to? But no, you have to agree on the spot with all your family and friends watching you with your eternal salvation on the line. That is the definition of manipulation and coercion. That Mormonism is a high demand religion that really encompasses your entire identity. Um, at least that was the case for us. Um, and it's based off of Christianity. Um, but Joseph Smith, who was the founder of the religion, um, he founded the religion 200 years ago. So, so he, roughly. He said he saw God 200 years ago. Roughly 200 years ago. Um, and he, he said that, uh, an angel brought him gold plates um, and that he translated the Book of Mormon from those gold plates. And it was a history of the people who lived here in the Americas. Um, it's a very American religion. Um, and I don't know, like, what, like, what do you want to know about it? <laughs> um, kind of like how, how you grew up and why you're deciding to um, break from that sort of. Yeah. Um, we grew up believing everything that the, that the church taught. And so it was very, there was no exceptions to anything that the church said was true. I mean, we both believed that it was a hundred percent true. And basically there, there is a prophet who um, supposedly speaks for God. And so when the prophet says something, everyone in the church does it. And so they, there are rules that, um, encompass like what you can do with your body, um, what foods or drinks you can or can't consume. Um, what else, how you have to pay a certain amount of money and tithing in order to get into the temple. Um, you have to get into the temple in order to be sealed and to reach the highest degree of um, glory in the afterlife. Like there's just, you'd have to go to church every week. Um, you have, up to do and, your you have to do your callings, the assignments they give you at church. Um, then there's also activities during the week. Yeah, seminary for people in ninth, ninth through twelfth grade. Yeah, so ninth through twelfth grade, there was an extra <laughs> class in high school, which was seminary, where you go learn about the scriptures. You're expected to read your scriptures every day, pray every day, um, attend the temple as well as church. Um, just very high demand. And you're taught that, that this is God's one true church. This is God's one true church. The prophet speaks for God and you have to do everything that the leaders say. Don't stray. Yeah. And you're not allowed to stray or really look at any other material, um, and books that aren't like on the church's approved list and what is canon. Right. 
So when you guys first met each other, were you both following Mormonism strictly? Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Very strictly. Um, we met in high school. Um, I was a junior, Adam was a senior and, um, we dated, but there, we were so scared around, um, things like sex in, um, the Mormon doctrine. There is like the three worst sins you could commit are denying the Holy ghost murder, and then any type of sexual sin. So, and so we, you know, dated for a year in high school, but we kissed and that was it like there it, there was just so much fear around it and so you know I don't know and so the the teachings of the church really stunt sexual development in both men and women in the church and that was one of my biggest frustrations leading up to to us leaving or at least for me choosing to leave is that it's it's stunting growth in many different aspects of, of life. And, and, and not just sexually too. I mean, like I didn't learn to make decisions for myself. I was taught that you're supposed to follow the prophet. You're supposed to do what your parents say. You're not supposed to question authority figures. Like you, I, I didn't, even like the clothes that I wore had to fit within the parameters of covering garments. And like, you just can't, you, you don't learn to make decisions for yourself. I feel like it's a very fear-based uh, religion in that, like, like we've said, it's a lot of these choices that we're making, we were afraid of the consequences. And I remember even after we decided to leave, I was afraid of going and in, in, let's say going and buying a coffee or going and buying alcohol. Like those things were still so instilled in me that I was afraid of even just the process of going through and doing these things. When I wore, when I finally took off my garments and wore a tank top for the first time, like out in public, I had a panic attack. Like it was terrifying. Wow. Yeah. That's just something that's like people that aren't in it. It seems like so wild that that would be such a huge thing. Um, so when did you guys, like, what was the turning point where you decided that you're going to separate yourself from, you know, that basically what you were raised in, what was that, um, moment that you decided that wasn't going to, um, follow, you know, align with your own beliefs? I, for me, it was hard to say that there was one moment. There were years of moments that kind of led up to, deciding, you know what, I think the church is fraudulent. I don't think this is God's one true church, but it took years of studying church history, kind of reading those things I wasn't supposed to be reading. Um, and really just my own mental health. I, I couldn't handle being in the church anymore. There's such high pressure to be perfect. You are supposed to be perfected in Christ. And so there's no room to really be human. There, there, there's the there is toxic perfectionism rampant throughout the religion. And I, I got to the point where I was like, okay, even if the church is still true, I can't do this anymore because of my mental and emotional health. Like, I just can't do this anymore. And I remember praying and pleading, like, this might be God's one true church, but I think God would understand that I can't do this anymore. And really, if to describe it as a moment is, is really, I don't know of anybody who's had a moment because you're placing, if you're, you're, if you're placing your eternal salvation of you, but you're also placing the eternal salvation of your entire family because you're no longer going to be sealed to them on a moment. It, it does, that seems like a far stretch to me that anybody would, would put it on a single moment like we spent years researching church history to make sure we knew for sure that the church was fraudulent before we had the courage to leave. Because if we left and we didn't know for sure, that meant that we were giving up we were, eternity with our families. Like if you, you're gambling really at that point. Yeah. So we had to know for sure. Right. That makes sense. Cause you see, you know, you see like some shows on TV where they're breaking whatever they're breaking and it seems like it's so like 
they have an epiphany and then it's like poof they're they're rebellious or whatever so it's interesting to hear how it really was like a thought so it really was like a thought out thing for you guys to oh very much so I mean it came down to for me to what is my integrity telling me my inner integrity versus what is the church telling me and do those line up and and they didn't and so I was just like okay well I'm gonna finally say I'm not gonna follow the church integrity I'm gonna do what I think is best and how to best help me and my family here. And over the past several years, you know, I would make decisions that went against church doctrine or church policy and, and I would be happier. And it was like, okay, something's not adding up. Like I decided to work outside the home when women are encouraged to be stay at home moms. Um, I got my tubes tied because I decided I was done having kids, even though that's at like a very, a, very young age. at 25. And like, I've never regretted that decision, even though it was against church policy. So it's just like, things are just not adding up here. Like if this was God's true church, wouldn't I be happier following what the prophet's saying? So how do you think your marriage has changed since, um, since you decided to, you know, not, not be confined to Mormonism anymore? It's been very, the lines of communication are open a lot more because you're you're more vulnerable we've we've had hard conversations one about church one about sexuality what like those line of communications that were hushed and and taboo to talk about are no longer hushed like we can we can talk to talk about it openly and freely and and really just say okay we love each other for each other not what the church had taught us. And we're finally really like choosing each other in our marriage. Before we believed that we made the decision to be sealed for eternity and divorce wasn't really an option. I mean, it it is, but it's highly frowned upon. So it was like, okay, we're in this marriage because we're sticking it out for eternity. And so it kind of went from that frame of mind to like, no, we really do want to be married. Like we really do like each other, like just choosing each other. We we liked each other when we got married. It's just, there's lots of hard things that happen. I mean, falling in and out of love, it, it happens, but we chose to say, okay, we're going to stick it out. How do you see the roles of, you know, husband and wife differently now that you've opened the communication lines a little more? Well, before, I mean, gender roles and gender um, in general are very important in the church. Um, they're things that are very emphasized. And so now that we don't have those rules, we just get to do it however we want. Um, Adam is mostly a stay-at-home dad. I, I mean, we own a business together, but I'm the one that works more. Um, and as far as like the home, Adam does most of the dishes and laundry. And we, I don't know, like we just, it just works better for our personality to do things this way rather than like trying to fit in those rigid gender roles that the church really prescribes. Did it feel like overwhelming at all when you decide, when you realized um, all the things basically that you were taught you are not supposed to do, now you're supposed to figure out how to do them like without feeling guilty? How did all that feel? It's it's still a work in progress. That's definitely like still just like, okay, why am I feeling this way? Why am I even thinking this thought? What, what's causing me to, to feel this emotion? And so it's very much a, a, process of deconstructing a lot of like teachings. our whole belief system the whole way we viewed the the earth and life and everything is just like we're like toddlers learning from scratch you know it's just it's I don't even know how to describe it really you know some people are like oh you left the church and you know just it's just like flipping a switch, but it's not, it's like peeling back layer after layer, after layer, after layer. Like, I don't feel like we've even deconstructed everything to the point where we can rebuild yet. It's just like, I don't know. It's overwhelming at times. What do you think has been like the most difficult um, thing to get used to? The lack of uh, having somebody tell you something to do. Like we have a lot, more freedom of choice, not necessarily, that's, that's a poor choice of words, actually, more of a, an unknown of what's going to happen in life, like, 
like uh, President Nelson, his last conference talk that we listened to was following the church. You know what you're going to do. You know the choices you're going to make because you know, the church describes like, it. Or what describes media it to, to watch, what friends to have, like what clothes to wear. Like he's like, you don't have to make those decisions because you're in the church. It's made for you. And that was kind of like our breaking point of like, okay, no, we're done. Um, when he gave that talk in October, but it's just like, we get to choose all those things. And then, but just learning to, to trust ourselves, making those choices. Yes. Is, is really hard. So as far as like family and friends, what are the reactions that you've gotten from, or have you, have you shared like with them that you're um, not aligning yourself with that anymore? Yeah, um, it's kind of been unfolding. I was very open about my faith crisis because um, I didn't think I was actually going to leave the church. I just thought I was questioning things within the culture and just trying to like have help with positive change within the church. Um, and so it was just kind of out there for everyone. But I don't know. It, it's hard to know with COVID. We've been pretty isolated. Um but it's definitely strained relationships for sure. And so I told my parents two Mondays ago, um, I, we had a video immediately following me texting them. And it's just, so my mother sent back a text immediately um, asking if what she had done was the cause of this. And it, well, it wasn't, this, this has been a long time coming, but then it hasn't been acknowledged since then. I've seen them multiple times since then. It's just not being acknowledged that that I had ever said anything or that we we're straying from what they're teaching. Like they, they won't talk about it at all. Um, and that it's something I feel like in the church, you're not taught to really discuss hard topics or um, difficult emotions. Um, you're taught, you know, just give that to Jesus. He'll fix that all. You don't really need to like get into difficult things we weren't taught to process our emotions at all. It was just like, okay, just be happy. And if you're angry, you just need to, you know, give that to Jesus. Forgive or whatever you're angry about, just let it go. Right. So like confrontation or like just problem solving skills are really lacking. Right. Do you guys still worship a God? Like, are you still believing of a God or is part of leaving Mormonism um, losing that belief in like a, an afterlife situation? Um, right now, I would say we're both pretty agnostic. Um, I, at first, I really tried to hold on to Christianity. Um, but then I kind of researched that as well and the history of Christianity. And I was like, eh, this doesn't really feel right either. Like, I just, I'm not okay with anyone telling me what to do with my life. Like, I just want to, I just want to live my life and make my own choices right now. And I, I feel like we've become okay not knowing a lot of these things, a lot of these, these big questions of, is there an afterlife or what's our purpose here on earth? It's okay not to have answers for that. It's okay to say, I don't know. I do trust that there's a, a, a higher power or an organizer or whatever you want to call it, but I don't know what that is or what it looks like or anything like that but ultimately I decided it, it wouldn't really affect my decisions like I just want to be a good person I just want to like trust my intuition and I think if there's a god they'll be okay with that you know okay. and I think it's it's really inspiring because there's a lot of people out there I think um of different religious backgrounds who do grow up maybe in families that or it really just from childhood you're just you think it's the right way you're just it, you follow a certain path you don't really question it and then you get older and you're like hmm maybe not like maybe I don't agree with everything I thought I agreed with um what would your advice be for anybody who's kind of in their phase of life where they might be questioning their religion continue to question I mean <laughs> that's that's really like where you learn and and develop yourself I mean if your church is or if you're any organization is telling you not to question them or their leadership that's a huge red flag and just continue to ask questions that's how you learn that's why we we have these critical thinking 
classes in in an elementary school in, in junior high high school college like we are an inquisitive species and so don't sty stymie that don't don't shut that down continue to, to explore continue to say what's best for me and also like there's going to be people that are upset and you just <laughs> Like you need to give them the space to be upset and know that that you're not that's not your fault. Yeah, you're not responsible for their emotions or their right. feelings. So well, thank you so much for sharing. Is there anything you guys are like looking forward to in the future that you're excited about? Um, I don't know. It's just like every day that I wake up, I'm just like my life is my own and I'm just excited to do whatever I want to do guilt-free. I used to have so much guilt and so much shame and I felt like, you know, I had to be doing, I had to get up and read my scriptures and I had to do the come follow me lesson with my kids. And like, I just had to do all these things. And now I just get up and I, I do what I want and enjoy life more. Like almost, I feel like we're living more in the present, more aware of each day, each choice. And, and it's, its effects because we're not so focused on on eternity we're not so focused on on where where we're going to end up we're, we're focused on where we're at now and and the choices that we make and how that affects now right like in in mormonism you're told that you know your soul is forever and like this life on earth is just a blip in the eternities and so i don't think i really valued and appreciated every day like i do now makes you value and appreciate people more yeah, yeah. It, are you guys um you know i'm sure you're look, viewing um raising your children differently too is that has how has that changed very much so i think we were definitely more controlling and um parented out of fear because like the worst thing that could possibly happen would be that your kids leave the church so <laughs> you're constantly like I was constantly indoctrinating, indoctrinating them. them, you know, reading scriptures with them, praying with them, doing come follow me lessons with them all the time to make sure that they stay in because the worst thing that could possibly happen would be for them to leave. And so now like we just gotta love our kids and be with them and support them in whatever they choose. Well, and they can pro progress at their own pace. We're not forcing them to, to progress or to, to, to achieve a certain goal in the church or anything like that. We're, we're allowing them to, to make their own choices and say, okay, this is your choice and, and allowing those consequences to happen. And what, um, what made you guys wanna share more about this on TikTok? <laughs> um, I don't know, like I said, I had been pretty open about my faith crisis on social media um, just like on my personal account. And then when I finally decided I was going to leave, I made the actual agency account on Instagram um, and just really was open about leaving and why. And then uh, I had no intention of downloading TikTok like at all. But, like I was like, oh, that's just for like Gen Z. And, <laughs> and then we just got super bored like over Christmas break and I downloaded TikTok and found this large ex-Mormon community on TikTok. Mm -hmm. And so it was more of just about connecting with other ex-Mormons at first. And then our page just got a lot of traction. Yeah. yeah. So are you, are you able to be like, I'm sure it gives you a sense of not feeling like you're so alone in your journey, hearing from a lot of people that might be going through the same stuff. So that's awesome. Yeah. Not, I mean, I'd always wanted a platform to be able to, to talk about my experiences and so Shrell creating these pages allowed that to happen. And like the first time I had ever been in that a video with her was, was talking about our, our sexuality and what we were taught in the church. And I didn't expect that to have to, yeah. to, to ruffle so many feathers. <laughs> um, that, 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 that one made video me, made me nervous. <laughs> now has over 3 million views and it's like, we did not expect that. So we had to kind of get some thick skin because a lot of the comments were not nice <laughs> um but most of most of the comments were overwhelmingly supportive right i mean i didn't feel like it would touch so many different religious backgrounds like all across the world and it's just it, it's almost it's humbling but it's sad at the same time to see 
all of these individuals struggling with the same thing and it's not talked about. It's, that's, that subject is so taboo. Sexuality and sex and, and your relationship with your spouse is so hush hush that it, it's scary to talk about. And it's so interesting too, because I always see either just the woman talking about it or just the man talking about it. But to hear like both people together talking about it is like something you really, really don't see it enough, I don't think. Because I mean, it's a two part thing. So you always hear the one side or the other, whether it's a joke or whatever they're trying to make a video about. But it's so, it's, it, I agree, it is taboo. And it's like, you know, it's something that if everyone's going through it, why are we like all being silent? <laughs> like, I don't. Right. But, and, and so we, we'd spent, we spent several years in therapy just going over how we treat each other early in our marriage, how we're trying to be better ourselves and going over that, that trauma. And it's just like, people need to see they're not alone. I mean, this is a hard conversation to have with anybody. And so it's just like, okay, well, how can I better help others? Like we've developed the skills to be able to discuss it with each other. Like it'd be nice to help other people too. <laughs> That's awesome. I think you were definitely helping other people. So I think even, even people who, you know, might never, may never, like you were explaining to me, might have not even realized, oh, I can question, I'm allowed to question my religion if I want to. It's not bad for me to wonder if all of this, I agree with all of this, you know, so that's just in, for me, at least it gives me a sense of like, and even if it's not just religion, but just like, hey, if you feel like you're not comfortable with anything, if you feel like you're not comfortable with something, it's all right to dig deeper into that. And, you know, I think that's awesome. So good for you guys. I think that's great. Right. Thanks. Well, thank you so much for sharing. I really enjoyed meeting you guys. And I hope that you will keep sharing um, more about your developments and your journey. I think that's awesome. So thank you so much. You're so welcome. All right. It was great meeting you. Stay in touch. Hey.